Hi, my name is Israel Gia and welcome to Coetus. As Christians, we are all called to meditate on the life of our Lord. And it's a great thing that Christ's public life was recorded in the sacred scripture. Now, through the sacred scripture, we can ponder and meditate the last three years of Jesus' public life before the ascension. So today, we will ponder the public life of our Lord. First, the baptism of Christ. The public life of Jesus begins with His baptism. But why did Christ need to be baptized? Actually, this is for Jesus to fulfill all righteousness. Because back in the old days, to be righteous is to fulfill the Torah. So here we can see how Jesus submits Himself into His Father's will. And we all know that Christ was baptized by the man named John. We all know as St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist fulfilled the prophecies of the prophet Malachi. He was the one that will prepare the way of the Lord. He is also the new Elijah. When we read the sacred scripture, both of them were wearing the same clothes, showing that Elijah is a foreshadowing of who is to come. That person is none other than St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was reluctant to baptize him, but Jesus insisted and John consented. The baptism of Jesus was the public manifestation of Jesus as the Messiah and the Son of God equal to the Father before the people of Israel. His baptism recalls our own baptism. And according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, through baptism, the Christian is sacramentally assimilated to Jesus who is in his own baptism anticipates his death and resurrection. The Christian must enter in this mystery of humble self-abasement and repentance, go down in the water with Jesus in order to rise with him, be born of water and the Spirit so as to become the Father's beloved Son in the Son and walk in the newness of life. As God the Father said, This is my Son, whom I am well pleased. Here God the Father indicates that Jesus is the Christ and it happened during the baptism. Here we can also see that Jesus is the new Joshua. Joshua entered Israel by crossing the Jordan River. Jesus, however, started his saving plan by crossing the same river. Second, the temptation in the desert. After being baptized, Jesus went to the desert to pray and fast allowing himself to be tempted by the devil. Jesus' replies to the tempter showed his filial identification with the salvific plan of God, his Father. Jesus went into fasting for 40 days parallel to the 40 years of Jews traveling into the desert. This also shows that he is the new Israel. And unlike the Israelites who failed the test when they wandered in the desert, Jesus passed all three temptations of Satan. For Jews, the number three, or Gimel, is a perfect number or the number for perfection. This also recapitulates the temptation of Adam in the paradise. And Jesus is the new Adam. His victory over the tempter in the desert anticipates victory at the passion, the supreme act of obedience of his filial love for the Father. Third, Christ preaching about the kingdom of God. He came to the world to preach the kingdom of God and to found His church. And we are all called by Christ to become a part of His kingdom, His church. And according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, Simon Peter holds the first place in the College of the Twelve. Jesus entrusted a unique mission to him. Through a revelation from the Father, Peter had confessed, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Our Lord then declared to him, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Christ the living stone thus assures his kingdom built on Peter of victory over the powers of death. Because of this faith he confessed, Peter will remain the unshakable rock of the church. His mission will be to keep this faith from every lapse and to strengthen his brothers in it. 
And Jesus invites the sinners to the table of the kingdom because Christ came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. The Sermon on the Mount and the parables are a specifically significant part of his preaching. Jesus' invitation to enter his kingdom comes in the form of parables, a characteristic feature of his teaching. And he confirmed his mission with his holiness and miracles. Jesus also chose 12 apostles to be with him and to share closely in his mission. Fourth, the transfiguration of Christ on the Mount Tabor. We can see this event when we read the Gospel of Matthew. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is well that we are here. If you wish, I will make three boots here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, lo, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples hear this, they fell on their faces and were filled with awe. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Now Moses and Elijah are persons of post-patriarchal period. Both went on Mount Sinai and encountered God. The three huts or boots that the apostles was about to prepare was actually a reference to Zechariah 14, the Feast of the Tabernacles or Sukkot which means huts or boots. Peter, James, and John knew that the Feast of the Tabernacles has been fulfilled. And as we all know, the Feast of the Tabernacles is a celebration to commemorate the liberation of the Jewish people from Egypt. Here we see the fulfillment of that liberation, which is the liberation of all nations from the hands of death. The transfiguration is also a prefigurement of his resurrection. He was transfigured before three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to strengthen their faith because his passion was close at hand. And Christ continues to unveil himself to us to strengthen our faith as well. As part of his kingdom, the church, we are all called to share Christ to the world that longs for Christ. And in order to share Christ, we must first know who Christ is. Every Christian should know the life of Jesus and reproduce Christ's life in his or her own life. Reading and meditating on the sacred scripture will help us because from sacred scripture, we will learn how to follow Jesus. He then will show us the way to holiness, to our ordinary life, in our family and in our work. Thank you so much for watching this video. So kindly please like, subscribe, and uh, check for more videos right over here. You can click on this post. And we'd like to thank Warm Fuzzies for allowing us to shoot inside the shop. Thank you, Warm Fuzzies. And feel free to share this video. And I'll see you again on the next video.